Every now and then, this guy and I will tangle. He'll want to play, which means he, want, he wants to headbutt the sh out of me. And I don't like that. Hello, my friends. Ken Berry here at OB Farms. I've been working with sheep. This is my second year now, so I'm by no means an authority, but I think I've got enough knowledge accumulated to make this video. This video is seven reasons why you want to include sheep on your homestead, on your small farm. When, if you're just getting started, here's seven reasons why you want to have sheep as your main livestock animal. Number one, Sheep love to eat weeds. Unlike horses and cows who really want the majority of their diet to be grass, sheep will eat not only weeds and briar leaves, but they'll also eat tree fodder. I've got lots of trees on this property that I'm slowly thinning. And very often when the leaves are out, I will cut a big tulip poplar. And these guys love tulip poplar leaves. And so that's just effectively free forage that they get to take advantage of that I don't have to pay for. And also if you have any weeds in the pasture, that's not necessarily a bad thing if you have sheep. They like that, so that's good. The second reason that you should include sheep is that they don't need nearly as much pasture as cows. They're smaller, right? They're about one-fifth of the average cow, and so they need about one-fifth of the pasture. And then when you combine this with the fact that they also love weeds and tree forage, that's good. You don't have to have a hundred acre farm to have a meaningful amount of sheep on your pasture. Number three is that these guys are absolute poop and pee machines. Everywhere they go, they're dropping their poop. And their poop, it's a lot like rabbit poop. It's little balls, if they're healthy and the worm count is not too high in their, in their gut. They make balls which spread out very, very easily. And therefore, wherever they go, whether there's grass there yet or not, they're gonna pee and poop. And so that's gonna rebuild your soil. It's gonna fertilize your grass for free. And there are so many young farmers when they get started, they're like, okay, I'm gonna buy a bunch of grass seed and a bunch of fertilizer. I'm gonna hire a bunch of big machinery to come in and basically scrape the living soil off. And then I'm going to plant this seed and I'm going to then fertilize it. And yeah, that's gonna get you beautiful grass for one year. And then you get to do that again next year. And so if you'd like to not have that huge financial input every year and also waste all the hydrocarbon fuel and have to depend on somebody else to get their big tractor in here and their big machinery, you can do this yourself. Now, the next reason to get sheep, especially if you're elderly or you're not in good shape or you just don't want to really pay attention. See this guy right here? This is Ramses. He's our ram. Every now and then, this guy and I will tangle. He'll want to play, which means he, want, he wants to headbutt the shit out of me. And I don't like that, especially if he's trying to sneak up behind me. And as I said earlier, a uh, sheep is about one-fifth of a cow. So if this guy sneaks up on me and successfully attacks, I'm going to spend a day or two on the couch. If a full-grown cow sneaks up behind you and has their way with you, you're going to spend two or three days in the hospital. And so definitely for people who are not in the best physical condition, they're so much smaller than cows, so much smaller than cattle that it's much easier. So I rotate these guys. This is the last day on this pasture. They're going to be going to a new paddock tomorrow morning. They've just about taken care of this. Actually, they've overgrazed it a little, but I, I don't have much grass yet, so I have to do the best I can do. But when I'm moving these guys, it's not a literal danger to my life and limb if one of them gets a little bit out of hand. Also, if they try to run through the fence, they're just going to bounce off of it. I've got six-strand, high-tensile, electrified fence. They're going to bounce off this. No big deal. But if a full-grown cow decides to come through this, she could do that. And then I'm working all day to fix a fence. This is over-fenced big time for these guys. One day I hope to have cattle here, but I've got to get my grass going. I've got to build some soil. I've got to get the, the microbial life under the ground going. That's what's going on. Now, the next benefit of having sheep is they're smaller than cows. So when it comes time to take one of these guys to the processor to turn them into breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it's not nearly as hard to load them up, to drop them off, and to get 
the meat back. These are St. Croix and Katahdin. I've got a couple of Barbados in here somewhere, but these guys are so much smaller. One of these who's fully grown, they're going to feed our family for two or three months. That's fine because I don't have to lug home hundreds of pounds of meat in cardboard boxes. And then also never ever is any of this meat going to go to waste. And we get a lot more meat out of our sheep than most people because we keep all, most of the organs. Uh, I have them cut up the bones so that they are either for bone broth, soup stock, or we feed our livestock guardian dog, Dogga, that's his name. He eats bones as well. And so we try to use every single part of these animals that we can so we get more when we go to the processor. And I kind of touched on it a little bit, but they're just easier to take care of, not from a danger standpoint, not from a run through the fence standpoint, but sheep are very docile. We even have colloquialisms where we say, you know, don't be sheep. That means that you're easy to herd, you're easy to take care of. There is a learning curve that goes with raising any animal. Definitely there's a learning curve when it goes to raising sheep. I just recently found out that not only do they have a very strong herd instinct, but they also have a bit of a territorial instinct as well well. I had kept them in a single paddock all winter long and fed them hay. And the young ones, the teenagers, so to speak, had gotten used to that paddock. And so when it came time to move to a new paddock, they were torn between, do, I, do we go with a flock or do we stay in our territory? And I had five or six teenagers who wound up staying behind. And I finally, I chased them around for an hour and finally said, screw it. I should have got video of that. I said, screw it. You, you'll figure it out. And I just left them in the paddock by themselves. And they're still nursing. And so when they got hungry and mama started looking for them they started looking for mama and then all of a sudden they showed up with the herd you learn little things like that with each season but these guys are the learning curve is not straight up like it is with larger livestock and that's a very good thing for somebody who's just starting out you could literally get a ram like Ramses right here and two ewes if you had uh, five or 10 acres. And then you could practice with them. You could rotate them. So when I first bought my first sheep, I had 20. And I broke this paddock up into three smaller paddocks using um, a roll-up wire. And so they would have that for two or three days, then this for two or three, and then that for two or three. This is maybe an acre and a half. In, in this paddock. So you could start very small. And then when they have a, one lamb, typically the first year they'll just have a single. And then after that, they'll have twins. But then, then when those are big enough, you send those to market. And it's just so much easier. The next reason I recommend you start with sheep is because they don't tear up your pasture like a heavier animal would. When it rains a lot here, you can kind of see that low spot right there. That becomes very boggy and soggy. And if I had 1,200 pound cattle in this, not only would I, I could only leave them in here half a day, they would eat all the grass, but they would mire up in that mud and they would sock up the mud and they would tear up the pasture. And then it would take months for that to calm back down and for grass to grow again. The biggest guy in here, the, the, the ram right there walking away, I can pick him up with my bare hands. It ain't easy, but I can do it. Whereas with a cow, no, of course not. And so these guys just don't destroy your pasture. And if you rotate them wisely enough, meaning don't let them eat down too low, then it actually stimulates grass growth and new grass growth. And so you're actually building pasture instead of tearing up pasture. And then the final reason, which I consider really to be the most important reason why you need some sheep on your small homestead or your small farm is because this is the healthiest food that you can feed your family. When one of these guys goes to market, yes, it's true, when I was a kid, I did not know why the pig, the pig went to market. I thought he was just going shopping, I did not know. But when one of these guys that I have literally every day of their life has been on this organic farm, there has not been one drop of pesticide, herbicide, or fungicide ever sprayed on this farm since we've owned it. All they've eaten, they have not had one bite of corn or any other grain. All they have eaten is grass and weeds and tree fodder. That's it. Their meat is the most nutrient dense, healthy, ancestrally appropriate food that I can feed uh, myself, to Nisha, to Beckett, to Bonnie Blue. There is no food on the planet. And then also not to mention our dogs because they'll get a lot of the cuts that humans wouldn't eat. We, we save all the bones and stuff. We have the processor do that. So not only is am I and my family getting the most nutrient dense food on the planet, so are our dogs and cats. I hope this video helped. I'm still a relative newbie. I've been rotating these guys for, this is the second year. 
And so I've learned a lot, but I still have a lot to learn. So please ask questions in the comments below. Please, if you are, if you're an expert at this and you see something that you're like, hey, dude, you're doing this wrong, please, please put your suggestions in the comments. These sheep are just eating the first spring flush. So a few of them have dirty butts like the U right there between me and the tree. But all winter long, nobody had dirty butts, no sign of worm overgrowth. But a, a few of them, because of the spring flush, have dirty butts right now. But other than that, if you see anything I could do better or differently, please tell me in the comments. All right, guys, this is Ken Berry from OB Farms. Let's get a good little close-up here. Look at that little baby laying with their mama. Oh, there's twins. There's the other one on the other side. I love this life, guys. You should try it. See you next time.